So I was trained as a Christian therapist. I'm embarrassed almost to say this, back in the 90s. That just sounds like a long time ago now. I, it, was, it was beautiful. I was just so grateful for my grad school training in that and, and for the opportunity to get into people's lives and get into people's stories. And one of the things that became more and more, I don't know, profoundly true to me was this passage in Psalm 51 where David says, Behold, you desire, you, God, desire truth in the inmost being. And in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. And what's fascinating is the Hebrew for the inmost place actually means the shut or the locked mm. place. Wow. And I'm like, yep, that's it. Like these things get in, they get in. We learn. I remember C.S. Lewis's line, life is a brutal teacher, mm. but you learn. <laughs> and the problem is, what do you learn, right? What, what has gotten into the shut place? The, these things get into us and it becomes locked inside us. And my work as a young therapist and then on through all of what we've done, our writing and everything has been to help unlock those places. Yeah, yeah, John, that reminds me of John 8, where it says, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Freedom. Mm. Freedom, gang. Welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast. This week is all about freedom. And we have a treat this week to have Jeff and Sylvia Robinson with us. Now, many of you don't know Jeff and Sylvia because they are covert <laughs> members of the Wild at Heart team. But Jeff is actually our director of intercession. And Sylvia is one of the key intercessors on our team. It's a little secret team that we have here. And they come to events and nobody knows they're there, but they're praying at events and they're praying over things like today and podcasts. So, mm -hmm. Jeff and Sylvia, welcome. So glad you're here. Yeah, Thank you. thanks, for, thanks for making the drive down to be with us today. Yes. And by the way, how was your drive down? <laughs> Two near misses on the highway. <gasps> what? Just crazy, yeah. Just driving down, and it's not such a long drive, but uh, two that were pretty close to an accident. Might have something to do with today's topic. Warfare. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The enemy, warfare, the world that we live in. So, gang, those of you who are tracking with the Wallet Hard podcast know that we are also tracking with the Captivating and Wild at Heart experience on our website. So, we are in week four of that for the folks that signed up in the beginning, but now people are joining all the time. There's 6,000 people That's currently awesome. doing the Wild at Heart and Captivating Experiences, which, quick refresher for those of you who don't know what that is, is a six-week free mm -hmm. online experience that you can sign up for on our website. We made these beautiful new curriculum, mm -hmm. beautiful new film series for women and for men taking you on a six-week journey. And then what we'll do each week is we'll trickle out to you one of the episodes and readings, scriptures, prayers, and audio from Stacy or me. So that's the experience. And some of what we're going to talk about today is spurred from that, born out of that. But what we're about to talk about is going to be very helpful to every listener, regardless of whether yes. you're with us in week four of the experience, or you maybe you just started the experience and you're you're in week one. You can sign up anytime and begin to do that here this year. So let's just start with the first pass. You guys just did week four as experiencers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that a word? I think it? it should be. Experiencers. Yeah. I don't want to say users. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, participants. Participants. There and, you go. And, you know, week four... Episode four in the curriculum focuses on you do have an enemy, and this is real, and the fight for our hearts has to take this into account. Just a first pass of you, mm -hmm. what, what came up for you in doing week four? First, just, you know, the beauty 
of the series. I just think the captivating part of it, especially the captivating films, are just beautiful to watch and just, you just feel your heart being caught oh, good. Um, as you're watching. Yay. So I, that really stood out to me. Um, but I would say, you know, just in the the fourth one that we just watched is a story of Sue here on staff, who I adore. Everyone adores Sue. But I think that what stood out to me about her story is how much warfare is intended to make us feel alone. Mm, yeah. And, you know, she she told her story of being single and, you know, all of that. I won't give any spoilers, but um, it stood out to me that even when you're married or, you know, not single, that warfare is intended to make you feel alone. Yes. And that really stood out to me. Oh, that's interesting. Isolate mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Isolate you. Yeah. yeah. Which is very much the season we're in too, right? Feeling very isolated. Mm -hmm. Oh my so, gosh. Globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Global mm -hmm. isolation mm -hmm. with so many still in various forms of lockdown and yeah, that's good. What about for you, Jeff? Week four is a man in the the battle to fight. I think one of the things that hit me really clearly, it's the scripture you mentioned. You, you desire truth in your inmost being. I just became aware that I've always wanted things to be true and just as a little kid. Mm. And it's just a strong streak in me. And in this season, it just hasn't all felt like that. It hasn't felt like we're doing what we ought. It hasn't felt like we're living life as we're supposed to. Mm. And that's gotten on my nerves. It's bugged me. It really triggers the truth <laughs> and justice and thing. the warrior wants to come out yeah. and fight. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the warrior in you as a little boy? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, one of the things that always pops up for me is when I was a little boy, my dad worked for a railroad on the East Coast. And we would, every summer, get on a train, sleeper car. I'm a little toddler. Up through elementary school, we would ride up to Richmond, where our, Virginia, where my family's from. And I would get off this train and get to play cowboys and Indians in Civil War battle trenches. Oh, wow. And it was like something just validated because I now I've got the perfect setting yes. to just play. But it, of course, it's not play at that age. I, this was serious. <laughs> and I thought of it as a serious set mm. for the warfare that mm. I was in. So yeah. I loved that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Sylvia? Did you identify with the warrior part in you, the fierceness bestowed on women as, as you were young? Yes. I mean, obviously differently as a woman. I grew up with my family on the mission field in Canada, and we moved around a lot. Mm. So there was a lot of feeling like I needed to, I don't know, I guess maybe defend my family in mm -hmm. a sense mm -hmm. of, you know, why we were there and what we were doing, that we were on a mission and I, I feel like I identify with that pretty young, you know, from a young age mm -hmm. that I, I was there a part of doing something really big with my family. And did I felt like an outsider oftentimes just because I was not Canadian and I didn't identify with a lot of the culture and things like that that I grew up in. But yeah, there was very much a, an aspect of feeling like I was fighting for something, for fighting for truth. So, yeah. Hmm. God gave us all some sort of fight mm -hmm. inside because we're born into a world at war. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to hang around wild at heart people very long to hear this, to hear us talk about the reality of yeah. it's not just us and God trying to figure out life. We're very far from Eden. Mm -hmm. And the world is actually a very serious place. It's a world at war. The war is over the human heart. And the things that get in, the messages that get in, particularly when we're young and don't have the tools to, you know, be able to sort through betrayal, loss, shame, 
you know, things. We, messages get into the locked place in our hearts. They become locked in there. And there is an enemy who is trying to shut our hearts down mm-hmm. and get us to back down and, mm-hmm. and give up on who we were meant to be and the life we were meant to live. Right. And we're talking specifically not about great messages. Mm-mm. We're talking about the messages that each and every one of us has received that usually land in the place of we are not enough. We are blowing it. There is something profoundly wrong with us. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9, be sober, Mm -hmm. heads up, be on the alert, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters around the world are going through the exact same thing. It's not unique to you. It's not bizarre. It, it's something that's talked about quite a bit, actually, in Scripture, is that there is an enemy that came in to the story, certainly into the human story, very, very early, right there in chapter 3 of Genesis in the Garden of Eden, to begin to destroy the human project and destroy the goodness, Mm -hmm. the beauty of the world, and all the things that we care about. That's the world that we live in. That's what session four is in both the Captivating and Wild Heart experience. Focus primarily right now on the idea of agreements. The enemy is a liar. Jesus says he was a liar from the beginning and the father of lies. And he will take the story of our life He will take the story of events. He will take just something that someone says, and he will put his spin on it. He will come in and try and get us to make an agreement with, see, they don't really love you. See, you don't belong here. You know, on and on and on and on and on. It would take us weeks to adequately name the kinds of agreements out there. But agreements, like, does that, is that something you guys see in your life, something that, that you recognize taking place? For sure. I do now. I, I kind of joke around about, I think I went to three captivatings and read the book twice before I was like, oh, that's what an agreement is. I really like, because you would talk about it, and I was like, I don't think I have those. Like, yes. that's how ingrained they were mm-hmm. yes. that I didn't know. And I couldn't even understand that concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, until, until there was an epiphany. Yeah. And I think it was during, you know, it was at a captivating event. It was during one of the, the quiet times. And I was journaling and started writing more and more about things that I had felt just as a child, and it just started to become very clear to me that I had accepted certain things as just, well, that's just true. That's who you are, and that's what you're like, and For those example. things weren't yeah, true. So did you feel comfortable <laughs> naming any of yeah. those things? I think that bit that I referred to before about being an outsider, mm. not not fitting in but trying really hard to fit in because I I felt like that was my job was I was the middle child so it's I'm the peacemaker and like helping everybody get along but feeling like that wasn't that I wasn't able to fit in still that somehow I was different or strange or unlikable in some way I think that was definitely a message just especially in high school mm trying to find my group of friends and that kind of thing and just never really feeling like I had real friends. And I would say even to this day, I feel like that that's a struggle for me. And part of that, I think, too, was moving around. Sure. That was taught to me, don't don't have any real connection with anyone because it's not going to last. Right. That was That was huge. And that family are really the only people that you're going to get to keep. Mm. That everybody else is going to go away or you're going to go away, but you're not going to get to have any long-term friendships outside of family. Mm. 
I think what's important that you're highlighting is that you had to break those agreements while they still felt true. Yes. You didn't wait Mm -hmm. until somebody threw a party and saved you a seat at the table Mm -hmm. or whatever whatever would speak to you like you were. You so belong. Mm -hmm. You had to break those agreements first. Right. And I still have to break them. Yes. Yes. They sneak back in Mm. all the time. Mm. It's so frustrating. (laughs) But the historic (sighs) ones do. Yeah. yeah, they really do because they're so rooted in our story mm-hmm. and and in the data. There's always data. So right. The, the enemy's usually not trying to manufacture this stuff. Right. Just completely right. out of nowhere. So, right. Mm-hmm. Events happen. Things right. are done. Things are said. Things are not offered right. to us. Things are not given and said that we mm-hmm. need. Right. The, mm-hmm. He'll take actual data and then it's the mm-hmm. see, you're an outsider. Right. And there's something fundamentally, what was the word, unlikable about mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then a little girl makes that agreement. Right. And when we make these agreements, they then become the filter yeah. through which we start to experience our life. Right. And everything mm-hmm. just seems to confirm it, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And it, right. It, it, yeah. It's so funny to me that you use the word outsider because that's been the word that I've had popping around in my own head for so many years Mm -hmm. for myself growing up. I, I was an only child growing up and that was odd and different for my friends. My family was the family that went to church all the time. That was very odd and different from my friends. There were so many things as I was a kid where I just felt like I and my family was just different. Mm. And as you get older, that somehow gets confirmed. And after a while, I was living like an outsider. Mm. There was even a joke my dad used to tell about the way that he would banter with other guys and say, so what's it like to be an outsider in the human race? Oh, my goodness. And mm-hmm. I, would, I, I started to wear that. I started to personalize outsider. And that is not true. That is not true. But as you said, Stacey, I, I, when I've known that finally hit me, wow, this is like a deep old agreement. This is what I eat, sleep, and breathe every day. And that is not true. Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. He's always here. I'm not alone. I'm not isolated. And yet, why is this so hard for me? to accept the truth. I've got to break that agreement while it doesn't feel like it's true at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as you break agreements, you move toward freedom. Yes. You move towards a new level of Mm -hmm. clarity, clarity in your own story, of being able to look back and go, whoa, I (laughs) see it now. That's how that got in. That doesn't need to shape me anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That doesn't need to shape me. Yeah. And John, I, I, one of the other things that, that we've noticed is I think in this season, in the last year, for a lot of people, God is going after some of those deeper, older, really heartfelt agreements. I really do see that in mm-hmm. a lot of people I'm around, that he's going after, he's going after the good stuff. And while that might feel like a real risk, especially in this season, Mm -hmm. there's a real offer of deliverance Mm. in in that. Mm. Yeah, because these agreements, they're not just historic, are they? Mm -mm. The world has come under, it's it's been rough, right? And things got in like fear. I'm going to go out on a limb and give an example here. I'm for a hike the other day. I am in the mountains. I am alone. Here comes a young, healthy hiker, a woman, healthy because she's clearly making better time than me, (laughs) coming up the trail. I'm going down it. She's chugging right along, and she's wearing a mask. Mm. And I'm like, sweetheart. That there is no possible way you can get COVID out here. The trees don't have it. The rocks don't have it. it just, you are alone in the mountains. 
but I, I could see the fear. Yeah. It's like, oh, bless your heart. Oh, mm -hmm. bless you. Fe making agreements with the global fear right now would be one, right? Fear is the captive, isn't it? The whole thing about it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. And I see how fear is almost at the root of every single lie that the enemy has spewed over my life because it's kept me from living in a freedom oh, yeah. that Jesus has won for me. Yes. Galatians mm. 5, 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do not be subject to any yoke of slavery. And these, these agreements are really enslaving. Mm -hmm. And they shape our relationships. They shape whether or not we chase our dreams, our careers, mm -hmm. like all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. they, yeah. If you allow yourself a vacation, if it just it's amazing how... Oh, everything. Everything. You guys, I think about how the enemy comes with his spin on things. Mm -hmm. Like some things happen and then he spins it to the worst possible. Like sharks to blood in the water and makes it worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I think about with the agreements that I've made, and they really are foundational, like I can't trust. I can't trust people. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, they're going to betray me. And they're going to betray me if they really see me. Mm -hmm. So hide. Right. Don't trust them with your heart. And there is a ton of data in my life that shows that is true. Like that's the story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. throughout my life. Right. And so to break that agreement feels enormously risky, mm -hmm. but then is the stepping out to risk trusting who God tells me is trustworthy. Like um, there is a fruit out of, of truth getting in my, my inmost being that no, I'm not worthy of betrayal. Jesus understands betrayal. Mm -hmm but I can break the agreements that that is going to be the outcome of every relationship that I have. Yes. And um, in Christ, with wisdom, trust people. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, John, this is really true for me. Just even last week, um, I mentioned to you that we went to Florida with our family. Uh, we took our high school son down there to visit uh, Sylvia's family, got to see my parents too. And we had actually been down there back in November. It had been a number of years since we'd been, but we are just coming off of a Florida trip from November. That was perfect. I mean, it was beautiful. I got to go fishing one day with our son. The logistics for the trip, the travel, baggage, everything, the rental car, the connections, the weather. Back in November, we're just perfect. Not this time. Mm. There were just disappointments here and there hmm. throughout. We were about to go out on an even better fishing trip. And the night before, we get a phone call. Uh, the boat's not working. Hmm. Can't go. And that's exactly what my son had looked the most forward oh. to on this oh. entire trip. And I'm just feeling my heart go to outsider in, in my own mind, translating disappointment. Yeah, this is what's going to happen for you, Jeff. And I thought, no, 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 wait a minute. No, no, that's not true. And I did have to, like, in the midst of family, I had to pray and, mm. and just right there in front of everyone, just start breaking agreements with God. And it did get better. Mm. But there were there were some huge disappointments. I, I lost my phone, shattered phone, oh. <laughs> on this trip. And it literally landed right at my wife's feet. We were in an amusement park. I had made every other ride so far and not had a problem. And I was stupid. I should have taken better care of my phone, mm -hmm. but I had done just fine. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia bailed on this particular ride at the last. Thanks, thanks for minute. Sorry, <laughs> but I think it was it was led by God. And and uh, I we get up to this place in the ride apparently, and the phone literally drops out. Must have been three stories. I mean, it was a huge coaster. Landed right at her feet. Wow. 
And it was uh, this beautiful Art Nouveau crushed glass inside of a frame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is shattered. It was shattered. gone. And, and I felt my heart just go to, oh, how am I going to do all these logistics and things the rest of the trip? And, you know, but I, I just had to be aware, I, you know, I've got to break those agreements when they come. And that, that's very fresh for me. Was there one that you that literally just came out of your mouth was, I was stupid. Yeah. Mm. I shouldn't have gone on yeah. the roller coaster with my phone or I should have had yeah. my phone in a better place. Even like something as simple as that, could that be? Yeah, I agreement? think so. Of course. Like, Which translates that it was my fault. It, well, there's some fault in there. I can't blame anyone else. But more and more, John, I don't accept the accusations that mm. come with that. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I do feel like there's freedom. There's already provision in getting a new phone. And that, that I think, is some of the difference over the years. Just to catch that and to know this is warfare, and I don't have to accept mm. some of the diminishment or other things that used to come from so long ago. Okay. I, I watch myself start to go there. It doesn't mean it's not still a battle. Mm-hmm. I still have to watch it and check. Yeah. And I would say years ago, that could have been a day ruiner. You know, Yeah. to have something yes. like that happen. And what she means is with her husband, that was that could have been a day ruiner. Yeah. 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 But because there's but there's freedom. Yeah. Yes. There is freedom. But isn't it the next sentence? Like you're you're saying, yeah. I could have zipped up my pocket or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's the, okay, it was my fault, but it's the next sentence. It's the, I'm so stupid well, that yes. I, that, that. and that's mm-hmm. what you're standing against. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. I, that, that phrase, you're so stupid, is certainly in there for me. Mm-hmm. For sure. You nailed it. And I am standing against that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sylvia, something yeah. fresh for you? Yeah, something fresh for me, I think, is um, with Caleb having been at home for school in the last year and a half, I guess, you know, end of end of last year and all through this year. In yeah. fact, this week, his entire school is now back at school in person four days a week. So that's the first time since March of... 2020. Yeah. And I'm a former educator and very much took on that, well, it will be my job to make sure that he is still getting an education, even though he's home and doing things online. His school and teachers have been fantastic, but still feels like my job. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that, you know, has been a difficulty in that is that it is up to me. And that that agreement is, this is your new job now, and you need to make sure that everything he does, everything he learns, everything that's going on with school is up to you to make sure that it's successful. And I think that that, you know, that was definitely putting a lot of unnecessary stress on me. Yeah, what's the fruit of yeah. that? What's the what's the fruit of No, this is up to me now. That this it can be more obvious. Of course it's up to me. I need to step up. What's the fruit um, of taking that agreement on? My demeanor was no longer pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> It was a burden, it, and I, I looked like someone and acted like someone who was carrying something heavy every day. Oh, wow. And it just, it keeps me from being light and fun and focused on who he is as a person. Yes. But I'm focused on who he is as a student. Yes. Mm. And that, I realized that was getting in the way of the learning he needed to be doing, but also getting in the way of our relationship in the midst of a really hard time for him, watching him go through losing a lot of things, as yes. as we've all heard, you know, the stories of what everybody's going through, but kids in particular. Yeah. 
losing on sports. He got an injury. He couldn't go to work. He could, you know, couldn't be with his friends, all those things. I needed to be there for him as a mom. Yes. And here I was worried about his schooling. That was a thief. That was, you know, an agreement that was stealing something that really needed to be there. And um, thank God, literally, for showing me that that was happening and that I needed to lay down that burden. But I, I am praying that prayer a lot of giving everyone and everything to God yes. um, throughout the day mm-hmm. just because it's yeah. so easy to to want to pick it up. Yep. I'm a teacher. Yeah, right? exactly. You no, know, this is my work. Um, it feels right in the moment, but the fruit of it, as you said, could have been devastating. Listening, friends, that's really helpful. You shall know them by the fruit. Like, yeah. just look at the fruit. What's going on in your life that's got really bad fruit right now? Mm-hmm. Could there be agreements involved in that somehow? Are they revealing agreements you've made or agreements the enemy's trying to get with you? You should know it by its fruit. Like, it, mm-hmm. it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Is, has your freedom been stolen? Has your joy been mm-hmm. stolen? Okay, so for me, I think a historic one that plays out in my life quite frequently is the agreement that I've made with the enemy against me is I am not enough. I'm not enough. So um, it plays out in so many different areas. At Christmas, it played out in my gift giving and wanting my gift to my children particularly to convey, I see you, I love you, you matter to me. And we have a lot of playful banter mm-hmm. in our house, and some of my gifts were fun, and I just was braced about being teased. And I, I knew that after this year we're living in, I didn't have it mm. to be teased. I just felt very vulnerable, and that the message would be, you're blowing it, mm. which means you're not enough. And then the fruit of that is me withdrawing. Um, and it's so funny that we ask this now because I'm sitting here in this podcast and like wanting to stop talking because the message is you are not enough. You don't have anything to say. You're stupid. Uh, just blah, blah, blah. Wow. And to go, no, yeah. no, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to break that agreement and <sighs> talk. Yes. Yeah. And gang, to be clear, agreements are not the only form that spiritual warfare comes into our lives. It, it, we kind of talk about it at our retreats as a good starting place. It's, it's sort of 101. It's really super helpful. Here's an agreement. Here's how you break it. I renounce that. I reject that. I choose the truth. And, it, and the freedom that comes from it is really wonderful, it, especially these lifetime, these historic agreements. It could be really wonderful to come out from under them. But that we don't mean to give an impression that that's the right. only way right. that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the scripture takes that all very seriously. When mm-hmm. Jesus says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he's assuming that the enemy has the power yeah. to steal and kill and destroy. So it's it, it's not, you know, devil in red tights. It's not simple easy stuff. There there are various forms of attack that come against us that can be really strong stuff. And very vicious. And the wonderful news is, is that the victory of Christ and what he has done gives us the victory against the current assaults in our mm-hmm. lives, like the power of the cross. You know, Paul says in Colossians 2, that through the cross, having disarmed the rulers and authorities, these are the various ranking foul spirits in the world, he made a public spectacle of them, Mm -hmm. having triumphed over them by the cross. So we can bring the cross of Christ, you know, are we being assaulted by fear, thievery getting into our lives? Mm -hmm. Are we we unable to sleep at night? A whole variety of things, physical afflictions, a migraine out of nowhere. No, I bring the victory of Christ against this. I bring the power of the resurrection against death in my life or whatever it may be. In other words, we pray the opposite. 
Right. We pray the opposite. You're feeling rejection. No, I am chosen by God. And you claim those verses. You know, Ephesians 1, long before God created the heavens and the earth, he had us in mind. He chose us, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I have chosen you in John 15. So we bring the power of the work of Christ and the truth of the word of God against the way the assaults are trying to get into our lives these days. Yes. And the fruit of resisting is really great. It's really great to come out from under this stuff, to realize you're not outside, to realize you are more than enough, to realize that, wait a second, like there's joy here, there's life here. There's so much joy here because because the fruit of being under the assault is really, it's designed to separate us from our ability to receive the love of God. Mm -hmm. We doubt him, we doubt his character, we doubt who we are to him. And when we come out of it, then we can actually believe mm -hmm. God and receive him and live mm -hmm. in the abundant places that he has for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John, um, I agree so much with everything you're saying about prayer and staying staying very much aware of where your heart is, being aware of that there's an enemy who's coming to steal, kill, and destroy, mm -hmm. and being ready to pray against that. I think one of the things that has been so profound for me in this season is to remember that even as much as on our prayer team, we pray in this daily. We pray with you. We, yes. You have taught us, you both have taught us mm -hmm. to pray in this for the ministry in our own lives, and we do. And yet, there is still the enemy who is so elusive. And one of his most powerful ways of working is to Get us to believe that he was never here. He's mm -hmm. not really a part of this. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself being surprised at how often I don't remember that I need to take on this guy mm -hmm. and be at war in prayer. Yeah, you go to what we would call less developed countries in the world, and they got no problem with this. Yeah. Right? You go down in South America, you go to Indonesia, they're like, oh yeah, foul yeah. spirits, totally mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. Curses, absolutely real. Yep, stuff you need to resist. Yep, that's a daily. That's just the world mm -hmm. that we live in. It was the, quote, modern developed world, particularly in the industrial West, that this blanket came over our worldview that there's just no, yeah. there's no spiritual reality out there. And, and the thing that, that is so clobbering about that is, well, then it's all you. You just right. suck right. at life. Right. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So again, that's another wonderful fruit of acknowledging the existence, the realities of spiritual warfare, the things coming against us is, whoa, it's not me. Right. It's not just me, this fight that I have in my head right now. I think during the last 12 months, women in particular have really struggled with anxiety. It's a lot of, you know, the gals that we've worked with and, and people that we mm -hmm. hear from because of our ministry. It's a lot of anxiety. And what an incredible ray of hope to realize, hey, that's not just you. Mm. Right. That isn't just you and those thoughts in your head. You have an enemy egging that on, literally throwing it on you. Mm -hmm. and that's hopeful. Yeah, it is. To realize, because you're not just stuck in your own teacup there, right? <laughs> like you, you can get out of it, you know? And for men, oh, there's a lot of anger. There is a lot of anger. And I think it's because the warrior within didn't know what battles to fight and go, oh, you are in a battle. Right. Let's be clear about who the enemy is yeah. here. And then rise up, oh warrior, and fight the good fight. Fight against him. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, this is so good. And um, it's so clear that men are warriors. And I just want to highlight that women are warriors too. Yes. There's a fierceness given to women, and this is what it's for. Mm -hmm. And actually, we know that the hardest person to fight for, to believe for, is ourselves. But we have to in order to fight and believe, you know, fight for other people, for their freedom. And, and that verse, so important to stand firm, to resist the devil, and he will flee from you, that it doesn't look like plugging our ears and closing our eyes and saying, you know, 
please, 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 Jesus, make this go away. Like, like we have a role to play. Rise up, girls. <laughs> Rise up. Put on the armor of God. And I love this. I love this from Isaiah 52, verse, beginning of verse 2. It says, shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Hmm. Like, we have a role to play. And I love the dignity of that. God's not abandoning you. Mm -mm. He's not saying it's up to you. He's saying you're strong. You're strong. Right. Rise up. Right. You're my daughter. You can handle this. Right. He's commanded us, actually, to stand firm and resist the devil. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm. So in this season, I think sleep has been elusive for a lot of us, just and just warfare at night mm-hmm. or early early hours of the morning, waking up and yep. seeing very low numbers on the clock. <laughs> yes. And um, you know, Caleb let us know that he was struggling with sleep too, our son. Yeah. So there was one night, I'll let you tell it, Jeff, well, but there was one night that you went up and were talking to him where he, I think he was telling you more about. Yeah, and this had been a few nights in a row, and we had been talking during the day, and I went up one night, and he was really distraught about it. And it just reminded me, we need to pray, and we need to fight. Together. And together as a family. And, you know, it had been a long time since... The little boy, we mom and dad would go in and pray every single night, and we got away from that as he got older. And I said, how, how about we pray? And let's do this every night. And we've been doing it every night since. And there were even some times on this Florida trip last week where uh, in family, with family in, in the, the big home, and, you know, it, it didn't always happen right away. And I looked in his eye and just thought, he's missing this and I and I need to make sure this happens. So after we said goodnight to everyone else, we would huddle in our room and we kept it going there. And this is something we're going to keep doing. And it's making a difference. This is good, guys. Mm-hmm. That's a good story. Time to rise up, friends. Time to pray. It it actually is a very intense time spiritually right now on the earth. And those of us that have spent a lot of years at the front of spiritual warfare and learning how to pray, our our discernment and our radar, we can tell you, is a very intense time. And again, that's super hopeful because then you realize it's not just you. It's not just you, the discouragement or the hopelessness, the fear, the isolation. Mm-hmm. It's not just you in your head and your own struggles, right? We are all in a great war, and God has provided and is providing the resources that we need. Maybe it's time to pray as a family together again. It's certainly time to start breaking agreements yes. again mm-hmm. in a yeah. fresh way. Yeah. And could I put a few more tools in your in your hands, friends? It, If it's been a while since you've prayed or or tried the daily prayer that's on our website and on our app, that shuts down a lot of warfare. It's designed to do that. The bedtime prayer, the prayer for breaking curses, for example. But also, a couple of years ago, we did a series on spiritual warfare here on the podcast. I would really encourage you to go listen to that, friends, if you missed it or if it's just been a long time since you've heard it, because there are tools the, the various parts of the work of Christ bring us these incredible resources for winning the victory. God hasn't abandoned his people nope. in this hour on the earth. We have the resources in Christ. One resource, Jeff, you were referring to earlier is greater and greater levels of wholeheartedness, that God is coming after the deeper things and the saints mm-hmm. to bring about because your wholeheartedness literally is like your immune system to all of this stuff. And learning to pray in a much more mature and serious way. I love it in that passage in Isaiah, arise, sit in throne. Yes. Right? That's Ephesians 2.6. Mm-hmm. For you have been raised with Christ and seated with him at the right hand of the Father. You actually share in the full authority mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Let's use it, gang. Let's let's employ that in our lives for freedom 
and for love and for joy, for better relationships and for all that God does have for us. So one more verse. In Psalm 23, that most beloved of all Psalms, he says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. So he's acknowledging the war. He's got enemies all around, but he says, God still has a feast for me, Yeah. right? We still get to go to Florida and see my folks. Yeah. We still get to do that art project we've been wanting to work on. I still get to thrive. Like, yeah, gang, you, God still has a feast for us. Sit enthroned, exercise your authority, resist, gang. Hope you found this helpful, listeners. Jeff and Sylvia, thanks for coming in. Really great to have you today. Thank you. Thank you. 